So today, this message is really near and dear to my heart, and we're talking about the approval addiction. The approval addiction. And as we're talking about this, I want you to really ask yourself, this is so key and so important in questions in your life as we're moving forward to this today, is have you found yourself before looking at how much you're trying to please maybe a certain person? Or how you want to find out if you're good enough or if you amount to something? Or if someone's going to be okay with you at all? And for some reason, you may get some, but then you find out it's not enough, and you keep hunting for more and more and more, and if you could just hear something. And this isn't something that just happens maybe in our teens or in our 20s, but this can go on through our lives of 40s, 50s, 60s, and on, because there's something inside of us that we just crave approval, and, and it's easy for us at times to kind of sit back and say, well, that's not me, I don't need that approval, and I think for some of us, there may be a shift today to where we see I, there may be something inside of me that's longing for the stamp of approval from somebody, the stamp of approval for something I've done. And today we're going to go ahead and we're going to break that this morning and we're going to get delivered and we're going to get healed and God's going to new, do a greater work in our hearts. Now, no other place does a, approval addiction get created or it festers up than on social media. And the reason you know it is this, is you go on and you get your post and you throw it up on your profile, whether it's Instagram or, or uh, Twitter or Facebook, and you only throw stuff up that you know will get the attention of other people, right? No one goes up there and says, I hope nobody sees this at all. That's not the point. So we go and we put on this, this post, whether it's an image or uh, whether it's something, a thought that you have, and, and you just think either this is going to be hilarious, I can't wait to see how many others agree with me, or this is going to be so awesome that it's going to be life-changing and people are going to go nuts about it and have comments and everything else. And so when we go, to go and put on these coasts, right, we're looking for all of the likes. likes. We're looking for the likes because we want people to like what we do. And, and what's even more cool now is, is that they have little hearts that click so we can see what people, how much people love what we have to say in the pictures. Or now even the emojis where there's a laughing face that people are laughing with your joke and we feel like, man, this is so funny. Look at everybody embracing what I say. Or even there's comments below and we're getting all this attention from what we put up, right? And then sometimes it even goes to another level when you're looking through to see all your likes, because you want to just kind of pump yourself up a little bit, look at all these people, man, who are just excited about me. And so we go and look through there. And then we find somebody who we look up to and think is so awesome when we think, man, they liked my stuff. And we feel even better, like, man, if they like it, that's all I need to hear. And man, that is, I must have really hit the jackpot. I must have really said something funny, or I must have really said something important. What's festering up is this hunger, this craving for approval. That man, I want what I have or my thoughts or my heart or what I've done. I want somebody to approve of it. I want somebody to like it. And if we're not careful, instead of it just being one time or instead of it just being a little issue here, an addiction of this can grow and grow and grow. And it may be an addiction just with one person that you want approval from. Or it may be an addiction that's a certain area in your life to where you're trying to get approval from all these different people because there's a craving and you are addicted. And when someone's addicted, the simple definition is someone who is enslaved by a habit. We are in slavery. I cannot control this. As a matter of fact, when you have 12-step programs, the first thing that you have to admit in this addiction is, I'm powerless, and this is unmanageable. I'm powerless. I, I try to stop, or I, I try not to feel this way. I try not to seek that out. And I just can't. I can't break this, or it's, it's unmanageable. I, I just... When I see myself, I think I've stopped. Then over here, I'm craving it again. I'm tracing something else because I just want someone to approve of me. I want someone to approve of the way I think or what I've done. 
And we can spend all our life addicted to trying to fill that hole when the truth of the matter is this addiction is so harmful that we can live our lives with holes all over the place because we never got someone to approve of us. Now, this message is my favorite out of this series. And the reason is, is because this is an area where I suffered with and fought with the most for the longest time. I had growing up, especially into my 20s, I understand looking back now how much I had a craving for people to approve of me. I had a craving for the attaboys from people. Man, that was great. Good job. I felt like if someone didn't give that to me, that they didn't like me. Or if the important people in my life couldn't find something good in me, then something's got to be wrong with me. Maybe I'm not good enough. I try to do this and it falls apart. And I remember so much going through this. And I'm so passionate about it, I think, because I believe passion kind of develops from the suffering we go through. That man, that we're able to see how God can break this. And the suffering, I would find out I would just come up, so, come up empty so many times. There was this one boss that I had that I remember he would come in and he was grumpy and I don't think anything could have made him happy. But whenever I seen him, I tried to be chipper a little bit and say something good to encourage him or be nice. And it was like every time I seen him, he shot me down. So you know what I did? I kept trying. I kept trying. Maybe this would be the one time where he'd say, hey, Dave, that's funny, man. That's cool. That's good. Or, hey, thanks for that. And I never, ever got that from him, but I didn't stop trying because I wanted approval. And then there was another uh, boss I had. He was actually a supervisor of mine. His name was Gary. And man, Gary and I had a good relationship and he always encouraged me. He always was saying, man, you're doing a good job. I remember he, was, he would say things like, man, if everybody did work like you and had the work ethic you had, then man, well, our place would really be pumping. It would really be doing well. Or I wish I had five employees like you. Or he would even brag about me in the circles of other people. And I ate this up because I had an approval addiction and I just need some, needed someone to put the stamp of approval on me and say, you've got it. You're good enough. But I didn't, and this is what I realized, even in that situation, is that with the approval addiction, it can you know, oftentimes be like cotton candy. And cotton candy, if you haven't had it in a long time, when you begin to eat it, it's so sweet and good. But you notice as it's sweet, it kind of fades and it never is filling. And when we have approval addiction, or we just seek approval from this one person, because we don't have to be addicted in every single area. But because I have this approval addiction inside of me, when I get it, like Gary gave it to me, it was good for a second, but I want more, and I want more, and I want more, and it's never filling, and that's what the addiction does. But there's an answer to help us to break free from this. And here is the lie that happens when we believe or when we're caught up in the approval addiction, whether it's we're powerless or we're unmanageable, and it's simply this that I will be happy if somebody else gives me approval. I will think I'm good enough if somebody else tells me I'm good enough. That even this, and this happened with me, that I can't feel good unless someone tells me I'm good enough. And so I would strive and I would try to just get somebody to do this and I never was able to have it. And so you know where this comes from and why we long for appro approval is because a lot of times when we were younger, we weren't validated. Or maybe we were told you don't add up, you'll never amount to anything. Man, you're stupid, you've tried and you always fail, it's never good enough. We're rejected, we lack confidence, we wanted to be accepted but we're never accepted. It was that crowd or it was that friend and we always got denied and we just have a longing inside of us, this whole of, I want somebody to approve of me. I want somebody to validate me and say, you're okay. And we can search our lives constantly. We can be searching through life like this. 
and we just have a big hole that we can't fill. And today we're going to learn how there is a way to get out of that and not be caught up in this addiction to be enslaved by a habit, to be enslaved by something that's just pulling at us. And I want to just share with you three things that are caused by an approval addiction. And you're going to want to take notes today. If the Holy Spirit's already getting a hold of you, you're leaning in a little bit and you're saying, man, I I want this. I, I need this approval. I'm tired. I'm worn out then you're going to want to take the notes today. And, and I want to share with you three P's of approval. And the first one is, is that we try to please people when we want their approval. We spend so much time, time trying to make other people happy. We spend time, this is what it says here, is that I want you to like me. I want to please someone so bad that I'm willing to drop everything that I have Just so maybe this one time, if I do something for you, that you're going to like me. And so we find ourselves trying to please other people and run around, and we are a people pleaser, and we hate that about us because we spend our life chasing the approval by pleasing people. Another thing is, if we're not pleasing people, we try to perform. We try to perform. We try to impress like me. I like to impress people with my work ethic. And I wanted to look like, man, he was responsible. He has it together. When he does something, he does it on point. He does it perfect. And I would try to perform for people. And the spirit of that is, do you see what I did? Look what I did. Look how good I am. Look how great that happened. And I would try to perform to get the approval from other people, or we can even find ourselves bragging about our accomplishments to other people. And we're bragging and bragging and bragging, not because we think we're so hot, but we're just saying, would you just say I'm good enough? Would you just say I'm okay and, and, and this is good? And if we don't please people or perform people, a lot of times we try to persuade people. We try to persuade people, and that, this is the, those are the ones who say, you're never going to amount to anything. Or the ones that seems like you can never make them happy. Or they always think negative of you. And so you spend time, you spend effort trying to change their mind that maybe this person will want to be my friend. Maybe this person will actually like me. And we struggle and we strive trying to please people, trying to perform and even try to persuade. And here's the brutal truth. This was like a, an awakening moment for me. And, and it may sound weird. And some of you, you're, you're in this point of frustration and, and wanting that hole. You can sense that. And maybe you have a picture of that person that you've been waiting for some day. I can, I can picture people that, man, I can't, Someday they're going to say this. And I wouldn't voice it. I wouldn't say it. But I remember like, man, what a day, you know, when they say this. Or maybe someone said it way back in the past. And they said that. And it's like, man, I just want to hear that again. I loved it so much when I heard that. But here is something I had to come to grips with. And I think you do too if you want to break free from approval of diction. And this is a brutal truth. But they may never approve of you. Those people, that area in your life that you want to have approval and you want someone to say, boy, good job, you may never ever hear that. But that's okay. God can heal you of that. Today, I'm going to help you. We're going to break free from that and you can have full approval in your spirit and in your heart and you don't need their approval. You don't need their approval to live a full life and that can only come through God. And I'm going to share with you something and I want you to learn something today. And it's something I had to learn for a long time because I was always working, striving, trying to make things happen. And if you want to begin to break free, this is going to be one of the first steps. This has got to be something that you always remind yourself, you always revisit when you are going through, you're, you're about to strive and chase something to be uh, approved by somebody. And it's simply this. You want to make sure you write it down and you take notes on this. But you have God's approval because of who you are, not what you do. Simply this. You have God's approval because of who you are, not what you do. 
He can't like you more than he likes you right now. He can't be more proud of you than he's always been. He's always been proud of you. He's always liked you. He's always loved you. And we spend time chasing things and trying to do things that here you go, God, look, look now. And, and he's, I, I've loved you. I've been proud of you. I've approved of you from the very beginning. And God has this approval that isn't going to fade like the cotton candy, that when we eat of it and when we receive it, that it stays and that's what sustains us and fills our life. He approved of you before you were even born. He approved of you when he was creating you. He approved of you when you said no for the first time. He approved of you when you felt like you were just a face in the crowd and no one noticed you. He approved of you when they said you'll never be good enough, you'll never amount to anything. He approved of you when you were insecure. He approved of you when you've doubted. He's approved of you when you're chasing and trying to have the career to be the person that someone else wants you to be. And he's approved of you. You don't have to do anything. You have his love. He likes you. He's proud of you. He wants great things for you. And you don't have to do anything for it. I don't have to. You don't have to. But we can be chasing it and say, God, can I get approved? Or running to someone else. But God doesn't approve of you because of what you do. He approves of you because of who you are. And the last time I checked, it's not me that goes up on the cross. It was Jesus. He says, I approve of you so much. I'll send my only son. And you have God's approval because of who you are, not what you do. That is a lie from the enemy that you've got to do something to find true, living, permanent, fulfilling approval. A few weeks back, I was with a, um, a gentleman that I met, and he is a secular uh, music artist and uh, in a band that's known around the world. And uh, recently, about two years ago, he became a Christian. And we got to talking about his testimony, and he was sharing with me things that I was just, I was so blessed by and inspired by and what God had done. And his life had been a wreck before, and as we were talking, he, uh, I was just like, so what do you do now? And what about this? And, and he was sitting there and he was telling me, hey, look at this app. I listen to, the, you know, this is what I read and this is what I look at every day. And I mean, this guy's life was a mess. His marriage, his family, he was addicted to alcohol, drugs. He had friends that that's the way they live. So that's the way he lived. And he was sitting here and he, he's telling me how much he, I said, man, you're serious about this, huh? And he said, I need Jesus. He says, I can't survive without him. And when I'm hearing a guy talk like this, that he's starving, this is a guy who's been addicted to other things, but he's saying, look, I'm so in need of Jesus so that I don't chase these things, but I chase him and my life is more complete in him. That's what addiction looks like. And if we're searching for approval, we're, we're caught up in the things that pull us away from God and we can never find that fulfillment, which leads us to the first thing today, and you better make sure you take notes, is when you chase the approval of man, you waste the approval of God. When you chase the approval of man, you waste the approval of God. God saying, I approve of you, come back to me. You don't need to chase that fulfillment. You don't need to chase that approval because you are wasting your energy. He has approved of you, but you decide if you are going to chase that approval or waste that approval. Look at what it says here in Galatians 1.10. And this is the Apostle Paul. He says, says this, for am I now seeking the approval of man or, everyone say or, or, or of God. Or, everyone say, or, or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of God. Or and if are conjunctions, and they connect the opposites together. And what he is saying is this, you cannot please and get approval from man and get it from God. 
It's either going to be this way or it's going to be this way. And so while you want approval from God, you're chasing approval of man, you're going to miss out on that. And he's saying, so you can be a servant of God, you can give your life to God, or you can be enslaved by the approval of man and coming up empty all the time. But if we hold on to the approval of God, that's where we're going to be fooled. Because remember, God approves of you for who you are, not what you do. And do you really want to spend your life enslaved to people who do not care about you? Or enslaved to things that no one will ever notice? Or do you want to just break the chains and say, I don't want to live that way anymore? I want, I want to know, I want to experience, I want to wrap my heart around how God approves of me. The next thing here, and, and this is real important for us to remember as we go into this next point, is when we're talking about chasing. Chasing man's approval and wasting God's approval is you choose the chase. You choose the chase. You choose who you're going to chase in life. And so you have to really come. Do I really want to keep coming up empty? I know this person will probably never approve of me. I'll probably in this situa situation never be approved of. I need to change what I've been choosing. Which takes us to this, is that God approves of you. Wait, sorry. Approval from God requires no effort on your part. Approval from God requires no effort on your part. Here's something that's so obvious and, and we don't know if we would say it, but it's just a reality. Is trying to get man to approve of us is exhausting. We're pouring our energy. We're pouring our heart. We're, we're pouring everything and we just want that and it's exhausting. And you know, if, if you are chasing the approval of man, if you have to earn and work for it and you're tired and you're, you're trying to earn this thing, you know what? That is the number one sign that you're trying to get approval from the wrong source. Because the approval that we want, the source that we go to is God because you don't have to get a, you don't have to earn or put any effort for God to say, I approve of you. I approve of you from the very beginning. I approved of you. And until the very end, it doesn't matter the choices that you make. I approve of you because of who you are, not because of what you do. And we don't have to earn God's approval. About nine months ago, or uh, nine years ago, Lori and I uh, bought the house that we lived in now. And I remember that, uh, that situation time. And for those of you who have bought a house, you know what I'm talking about. Is that when you're getting ready to hunt for a house, you have to make sure you get approved for a what? Loan. For a loan. And the crazy thing about getting approved for a loan is they want documents from everywhere. From every part of your life. They want to know what your grades were in the third grade. They want to know, I mean, your mom's maiden name. They want to know how much you spent when you're in junior high. They want to know, I mean, they want to know everything. And so they are requesting, you know, we need this form. We need proof of this. We need proof of this. And how would you do here? And what about your job? And what do you own now? And what do you still owe here to this person? And what kind of debt do you have? And they keep just throwing all these different things at you until you can hear the words that you, that you want to hear. Your loan has been approved. It's been approved. They're not giving it to me. I earned that approval. I earned it from the way I operated with my credit and all the paperwork that I brought. I earned that. They didn't just say, hey, you know what? We just kind of liked you and thought, you know what? We're going to go ahead and give you the loan. They didn't do that at all. It was something you're going to have to prove that you've worked for this and you're going to have to work for it and bring everything together that you're supposed to have. And God's approval doesn't work that way. You don't have to give any effort. You don't have to strive or he says, go and do this. Or some of you have been in churches where they've been judgmental and say, until you clean this up, you can't. Until you stop doing this or you need to start doing this and then you'll be accepted. Those are lies from the enemy because God approves of you and you don't have to put any effort towards it. It is simply because he loves you and he approves of you 
for who you are, not you doing anything. Here's a powerful scripture. In Romans 4, 6, it says, God approves of people without their earning it. God approves of people without their earning it. That's just a reminder that I don't have to do anything to get God to approve of who I am. See, this is so important when it comes to approval. Is that we can get in a place to where, well, what are you saying, Pastor Dave? I'm supposed to live this way. I'm supposed to act this way. And I want us to back up for a second because, see, you need to understand this. I don't obey God to get his approval or earn his approval. I obey God because he's already given it to me. I don't obey God to earn his approval. I obey him because he already gave it to me. I don't have to work now so that he pays me later. You know, he's paid me, he's fulfilled it, and I just live the way he wants because I want to obey him because he approved of me the way I am. And when I've come through this, I've had to walk through this and get healing through this in my life and find this approval, embrace the approval that God's given me. It just comes down to this. I just want to honor God with my life. I just, if you look at my tombstone, I want, it, I want it to be able to say he honored God with everything he had. I don't honor him because, man, I hope he approves of me. I honor God because, God, I want to just give my life to you and everything because of who you are and how you love me, how I am. And it requires no effort on my part, just following him and walking with him because he approves of me the way I am. The last thing here is this, is that God approves of you because of the value he sees in you. God approves of you because, the, because of the value that he sees in you. Now, a while back this summer, my dad, um, we sold his house and so he could just kind of downsize and he's getting older. And so it was, uh, it made more sense for him to function with uh, something smaller and part of that was that kind of what we were working through uh, was he couldn't have the extra truck he had in the driveway anymore. He had to get rid of it. And so he graciously decided to give it to me. And it was a 1987 uh, Sierra or GMC Sierra pickup. And so I got this and I'm thinking, man, this is going to be a project. I'm going to go ahead and fix some stuff up here. It's been sitting for a while. I'm going to clean this up and put a little money in. And man, it's going to look like a nice truck. But my kids, whenever I'd take them in, they're like, dad, this truck sucks. Dad, this truck is ugly, man. It's gross. Why do we have to sit in this thing? Look at it. It's a mess. The floor is coming up and it's all jacked up. This is embarrassing that we have to sit in here with you and go and ride in this truck. I mean, they like made it clear they hated it. But at the same time, my dad, had just having it in the driveway, would have people that would show up, come and knock at his door and say, look, how much do you want to sell the truck for? I want to buy it. My kids failed to see the value in the truck. And people in your life, they fail to see the value that God has placed on your life. He sees value in you that nobody else has ever seen before. He has value in you like you have never seen before. Nobody knows what God has put into your life except for God, and that is the value that he places on you. That is why he approves of you, because he put it there, and he wants to see more for your life, and nobody else can see it but only God. And we don't need to chase the opinions and the thoughts of other people because they can't see what God sees. Listen to this. We look for worth and identities not based in how God values us, but in what others think about us. We look for worth and identities not based in how God values us, but in what others think of us. We're chasing these thoughts and this, this approval and someone to just say you're okay and you're accepted and you're actually going to be worth something and you actually do a good job. We're looking at that and God says you gotta, you're doing a good job already because I value you for what I've put inside of you and who you are, not what you do. There's a powerful scripture in Romans 8.31. It says, what then shall we say to these things? This is the Apostle Paul and he says this. 
This is an important scripture. This is a, a very uh, popular scripture. You've heard this before. Maybe even you don't go to church, but you've heard this before. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Now, against comes from a, a root word that's called kata. When it says against us, it's saying kata, it means down on. It means down on, that someone is against you. They're down on you. But if you go back to where it says, if God is for us, it comes from a word that means hyper, which means beyond, which means abundance. And when it says that God is for us, who can be against us? Those who are down on you, those don't think, that don't think high of you, they think low of you, those don't give you in, who don't give you any credit at all. He says, I give you abundance. I give you beyond. You are not who they say you are. You are who I say you are. And I'll give you a beyond and I'll give you abundance for you are. If you are for me, who can be against me? Who can change the opinion of who I am? Who can? But only God, if he's for me, then that's all I need. Because he gives me above and he gives me beyond. The value of something is proven by how much someone is willing to pay for it. The value of something is proven by how much someone is willing to pay for it. God the Father was willing to send Jesus to come down and die on the cross for you. Not for a crowd, but for you individually. I owed a debt that I could not pay. A cost that I could not cover. But he sent Jesus who was holy and perfect to take my place and he says, this is how valuable you are to me. I'm gonna send my one and only son so that you know I approve of you and you have value that nobody else sees. And he sees value in every person in this place. He approves of you and you have his approval because of who you are. Not because anything you do or anything that you have done and the approval that we get from God is, has more satisfaction than any approval that you can chase or try to get from somebody, maybe somebody you looked up to, maybe a parent, a father, a, a mother, a teacher, or just someone that was important in your life, a friend, and you're trying to get all this. There is no greater place that you can find approval because God approves of you the way you are. And you know, when Jesus was getting ready to, to uh, perform and move into ministry, there was a time where he was being baptized in the river. And when he was baptized, he hadn't even performed a miracle yet. He hadn't gone into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and overcame temptation. He hadn't uh, raised the dead. He hadn't, um, those who had blind eyes, he hadn't healed them. He hadn't done any of this stuff. But look what happens when he's being baptized and when he's come up. It says this. This is from the voice of heaven, the heavenly father. He said, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. He hadn't done anything at all. He was just pleased because he was his son. And God's just pleased with you because of who you are. He's pleased of you, with you. Because you're a son and you're a daughter of God. And whether you think so, or maybe you don't even think you've got your approval, you've got God's. And I, I'm so grateful that I've been able to break, break free and break through this chain of approval addiction because, man, I needed it so much and I was striving. And today I'm in a place to where literally I don't need the approval of other people. So when people don't like me, does that mean I have to strive and try to get them to like me? No, it hurts. It hurts. I can have hurt feelings. When I feel like someone just is avoiding me or they look down on me or whatever, that's really disappointing. 
But my validation and my approval doesn't come from them. It comes from the Lord. And He's called me to be the person that I am. And I don't have to prove that to anybody. Because He approves of me just the way I am. He doesn't care what I do. Because He values me. He values you. There's a point in the scriptures here where there were some men who actually wanted to follow Jesus. And they were leaning towards that and they were wanting to follow and see more of him, learn more about him. But then there were some individuals over here who had more spiritual clout. And they began to put the pressure on these men and to to stop them, encourage them not to follow Jesus. And here they were with the tension. They wanted to follow Jesus, yet they, they wanted the approval of man. And this is what it says that happened. It says, They love the approval of men rather than the approval of God. They craved, they chased the approval of man and they walked away from their Savior. Because when we chase the approval of man, we waste the approval of God. Whose approval are you going to chase from now on? Whose approval are you going to say, that's all that matters to me? Are you willing to say that I love the approval of God? I love that He values me. I love that when I come to Him, it's not temporary or just doesn't, it doesn't fade. It is eternal that God approves of me just the way I am. He sees value in things in me that no one else sees. No one will understand. And I just want to honor Him and give my life to Him. Which one are you going to choose? Because you got a Heavenly Father who approves of you just the way you are. You don't have to earn anything anymore. 